Today we have another DIY mechanical keyboard build and this will be featuring the DZ60 Rev2 PCB and the KBD Fans 5 degree acrylic case. This is a build request from someone so we picked out all of these parts and they're mostly from KBD Fans which is a pretty well known store from China that offers value custom parts. I've done a couple of 60% builds using the Satan GH60 which is a cheap and readily available PCB and it's a great way to get into custom builds. However, as the market grows there continues to be new products and the DZ60 Rev2 PCB is one of those great releases. My friend Chokan has a great video on why you should get the DZ60 and other new entries in the market over the older Satan GH60. We got this from KBD fans and this is the current Rev2 USB-C version. There's two main upgrades that you get with the DZ60 over the GH60. Firstly, we get even more options for the layout, especially that bottom row, and of course this does support the ISO layouts. And then the major cosmetic change is that we now have 16 RGB underglow LEDs on the underside of the PCB. Back in the day, the B-Face from Wind Keyless and then subsequently the copy B-Fake were the go-to underglow PCBs, but these days it's a common feature that's now kind of expected. Before you do anything, it's good to test your PCB. Just plug it in, open up a keyboard tester and short each key with some tweezers. Next step is the stabilizers. If you can, try and get genuine cherry stabilizers or some sort of screw-ins because rattly stabs can truly ruin an otherwise good keyboard. I clip the little legs off, which takes away a bit of mushiness and I lube them with some super lube just to ensure there's no rattle. Since the DC60 has quite a few different layouts, there's a couple of spots for some of the stabilized keys. The backspace is straightforward as well as the enter key, but the right shift has two spots. So to demonstrate, I'll put it in the wrong spot, and we can clearly see that it's wrong for the standard ANSI layout that we're going for. It's very important to make these mistakes now rather than later, as we won't be able to remove them after we solder in the switches. The same goes for the spacebar as well. You can lay out your keycaps to ensure that everything lines up correctly. Normally with genuine stabilizers, they stay in place pretty tightly and don't pop out. However, for the left shift key, there's two possible positions for the stabs in which share the same holes. So I found that they were way too easy to take out, which can be extremely problematic in a finished build, and can potentially result in you having to desolder the whole thing. One thing to prevent them from coming out is to shove in a toothpick. With some stabs they stay in pretty tightly, but this just wasn't cutting it so I resorted to hot glue to fill in the gaps. And I decided to do it to the rest of the stabs as well, and it worked out pretty good. And the good thing with hot glue is that it won't harm the PCB, and it's very easy to remove if you want. Now to the plate. The DC60 does have its own prescribed mounting plate, However, the aluminium plate wasn't in stock at the time. And since we're doing a completely standard ANSI layout, it didn't matter what plate we used. So we got this standard aluminium plate in silver. However, to take advantage of the available layouts, you have to get the proper plate that is sold on KBD fans. The switches we have are 65 gram R10 Zilios. For tactile MX style switches, Zilios are hard to beat. These are manufactured for Zeal PC by Gatoron and have an emphasis on tactility and smoothness. However, it does come with a higher price tag as well. These are PCB mount switches, so they have the two prongs that go nicely into the PCB, so it's easy to make sure that the key switches are flush to the PCB. Sometimes the prongs can be too tight, preventing the switches from going all the way in, so if they are, you can snip them off.
Now to the soldering. You will need a soldering station or iron of some sort, so if you don't have one then maybe a friend can do it for you, but it really is just easy through hole soldering stuff. My friend Juju has a great video specifically on soldering mechanical keyboards, so check it out if you haven't soldered before. But all we want to do is make a shiny concave cone, and as long as your iron isn't too hot, I like to have mine at about 330 degrees celsius, and you don't keep your iron on there for more than a few seconds, then you should be sweet. The PCB also does support backlighting for singular colour LEDs, so there's no RGB key lighting, and we have 3mm purple LEDs, and when installing LEDs, the longer pin is the positive, with the shorter the negative, and on the PCB it will show the polarity with the positive symbol. One thing that did get me was that there were 4 keys on the bottom row that were flipped, so those LEDs didn't work and I had to desolder them and then put them back in. But anyway, here it is all done. The yellowy brownish residue for each joint is just flux, and you can clean that off with isopropyl alcohol if you wanted to. Alright, so now to the case. This is the 5 degree case from KBD Fans and is the frosted acrylic version. This is also available in the transparent acrylic and also the aluminium version in various colours. Before we do anything, it's always good to put on the rubber feet because the acrylic is easy to scratch. I've built a couple of frosted acrylic boards with the Tex acrylic case and the cheap Chinese ones and this is a step above. This one adopts the KBD fans 5 degree design which they have in aluminium so it has this unique angular aesthetic which is quite different to the usual just rectangular cases. The standoffs are part of the case itself, so the router simply cut around it and it was tapped to create the thread. So there's no brass threaded inserts or anything, so when putting in your screws, be careful not to over tighten because there is the risk of cracking and just wrecking the threads because it is just acrylic. Also the screws aren't magnetic which always makes putting in screws annoying. I tried to use my own 6mm M2 screws but they were just too long as the ones provided have 4mm long threads. Now to the keycaps. The owner wanted something very clean. At first he wanted something like a grayscale gradient, but with keycaps it's always tough to get what you want, and often what you want is very expensive. So we got these blank two-tone grey DSA profile keycaps, and these are very affordable. We just got the 60% ANSI set, and they're pretty nice and you can always change the keycaps later if you wanted to. These are made from PBT plastic and are about 1.3 to 1.4 millimeters thick, and they're quite textured which seems to be the case with many blank PBT sets. Oh, and KBD fans chucked in this cute little novelty keycap, but it's in the XDA profile, so it doesn't match the set that we have. And here it is all put together, and it's a very very clean result. Acrylic is such a nice alternative to work with, and it's a nice change from the more standard aluminium for custom builds. Acrylic has that softness to it, which is especially accentuated with a frosted finish. It's an interesting contrast to the angular nature and hardness of the case. When you look at the aluminium version, you definitely feel that sharpness, as it mimics that sort of crystallic shape. But with the acrylic, it strips that back a bit, and you get that fusion between the two, as the hard lines are now much more subtle. However, its angular design is still prominent. As said, in the past I've worked with simple rectangular acrylic cases, however this is much more complex in its shape, but it still manages to look clean. Although of course since it is an acrylic case, we have to show the underglow. And this is where the keyboard really comes to life. The DC60 has two rows of 8 underglow RGB LEDs, which is more than enough to make this guy glow. 
One of the advantages of its angular design is that the bezels are now thicker, and this helps with the diffusion of the LEDs in reducing the concentration points, although obviously on the bottom you will still clearly see the LEDs. It's difficult to get an accurate representation on camera, but around the sides the spread of the light is done quite well. There's also a bunch of lighting modes that you can cycle through. I like to keep it pretty chill, so I'm quite a fan of just a singular colour type of thing, but you can go full rainbow when you feel like it. One issue I had when I first plugged it in was that I wasn't able to lower the brightness of the underglow LEDs, which is a problem because it's an absolute beacon in the darkness. So to fix it, we have to reflash it. The DC60 uses QMK, which is a highly customizable firmware. On the QMK firmware builder, you'll find a bunch of keyboards and even a couple of DZ60 preset layouts, but I just picked the standard layout. And here we can customize a bunch of things in regards to macros, key mapping, and all of that, but again, do your research. Here's the problem I had before. On layer 2, we have our RGB keys from the Q to the I key. Previously, the U and the I keys were not assigned to that, and therefore I couldn't control the brightness. And when you're done, just go to compile, and then you download the hex file. On the DZ60 product page, there's a bunch of links, and here you will find the software to flash the hex file onto the keyboard. So we just find our hex file and open it, and the keyboard will then need to be restarted. Unfortunately, there is no reset button on this revision of the PCB, so we press function plus pipe, or backward slash, and that will reset the keyboard, and then you press flash keyboard and you're done. I also did put in purple LEDs for the key lighting, and that can be controlled as well. And it's a very subtle light that just peeks through the gaps of the keycaps. Interestingly, when you turn the underglow off and just leave the key LEDs on, we still illuminate the case, but in a much more subdued way, which I came to like very much. Using the 65 gram Zilios, the typing experience is always going to be good. Although I felt that these DSA keycaps didn't bring out the best of the switches. The deep dish keys felt absolutely amazing though, but I guess it was due to the combination of the aluminium mounting plate and the acrylic case, because everything is quite soft. So this experience would be quite different to say the aluminium 5 degree case with a steel mounting plate. And also, the rubber feet make this thing quite bouncy. It didn't really impact on using the keyboard when typing, but if you push on the front side, it does bounce quite a bit. Overall, it was a really fun build. I loved working with a 5 degree case, and the underglow lighting really reacted well to it, and the DC60 is a great 60% PCB. KBD fans can do no wrong at the moment. They're really riding the value mechanical keyboard custom wave, and they're doing it well, and it'll be interesting to see how long they can keep this up. If you're looking for a custom underglow build, I feel that the 5 degree case with the DZ60 is a hard to beat combination.